Hi, welcome to Bellarmin. My name is Mrs. Lindstrom. I teach in the English and theology departments here. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a general introduction, an overview of the five phase focus note-taking process. So let's get going. So the focus note-taking process is made up of five phases. Let's establish a little bit of context first though for why we're doing this. My goal today is to provide an overview of this entire process that help you understand the why. Why are we emphasizing focus note-taking in general? And give you some key tips to help you get going both for online work, distance learning, and face-to-face. -face. So you may have seen this before. This is called the curve of forgetting. Basically the idea is that when we learn something new, if we don't interact with it within a couple days or engage in a meaningful way, within a week, we basically retain about 10% of it. So really the goal of focus note taking is to combat that forgetting curve by engaging with our notes in new and meaningful ways over the course of time so that we retain as much as we possibly can. So students get into this mentality of one and done. I'm gonna take these notes and maybe revisit them later when it's time to study for my test. That's not the best way to solidify information. The best way to retain the information that we're learning is to engage and follow this process and it'll make us better learn. The first phase is actually taking the notes. So let's take a look at what we need to do to prepare for that. Determine which is more comfortable for you. Are you gonna take your notes on paper or are you gonna do them digitally through an app like Notability? Preview the material, the source material. Are you reading a textbook? Are you reading a web page article? Are you going to be watching an educational video? This will help you determine maybe how you want to format your notes. The format for your note taking is probably gonna come down to personal preference. Maybe you'll do the Cornell style like I have pictured here on the left. Maybe you wanna do something hierarchical or maybe it's just gonna be a simple T-chart or a mind map or a list. But you can always ask your teacher to help you with some ideas for how to set up your notes. But one thing you absolutely need to do is write down the why for the purpose of the notes. This is a key step to begin any annotation activity. Did your teacher give you an essential question, a learning objective or a target, maybe some guiding questions? But if the purpose for the note taking is not evident to you, ask your teacher, but make sure that you put that essential question or whatever the purpose is at the very top of your notes. Here are some tips and reminders for doing a good job in your phase one notes. You wanna begin with a dark color, blue, black, green, purple, but one color. And that's because when we come back to revise them later, you're gonna be adding different colors to your notes in order to signal different ideas to your brain. Make sure to leave a bit of white space around the key points and topics. Again, it's a chance to go back and add more information later. Do not type or write everything down. Resist the urge to do this. The whole point of taking notes is to annotate, to truncate, to paraphrase the information that's being given to you and put it in a shorter, more concise and economical form. I'm gonna show you how to use the multitask function or the split screen to take awesome notes during the phase one process. Now this will be notes that you're taking from any information source. In this case, I'm gonna show you an example, one from notes from a video and then from a textbook. Okay, but let's say your teacher wants you to take notes from a YouTube video, for example. What you're gonna to wanna to do is already have Notability and your notes set up and open ready to go. You're gonna reveal your doc, tap and drag that YouTube icon up and over to the left and it'll automatically create the split screen for you. The next cool thing I like to do is minimize all that information on YouTube and then also drag that middle bar over to the left so that I have more room in my notability window to actually write things down. So I've begun to take notes on my teacher's awesome and engaging lecture on the temple in first century Jerusalem. What I'm noticing though is that the information is coming at me a little bit quicker than I can write. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause this video and I'm gonna to continue to process as my brain needs. Maybe I just need to write down that last sentence they said, or maybe I actually want to rewatch maybe the last 10, 15 seconds, just to make sure I got the information I needed. Okay, so now you need to take notes from a textbook, a PDF, website, really any open app that you have on your iPad. So if you start, same process, Notability is open, ready to go. In this case, I'm showing you how to move an ebook up over to the left side, and then you can blissfully scroll through and read your textbook while taking quality reading notes as you're reading. So this again works with any open app that you have on your iPad. So the second phase is when we're gonna be processing our notes. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Here you're going to be using different colors from the original color that you took the notes in to highlight and underline, circle, key terms, dates, names, etc. This is also a chance for you to be chunking some of the information, maybe using a box to put similar things around each other, show a connection, maybe using arrows to link similar ideas. 
This is also a time to use that white space that we saved when we were originally taking our notes. This is when you can add new information, maybe after discussing things with a partner or getting some feedback from a teacher, or maybe the teacher gives you some new information that maybe you might have missed when you were annotating in the first place. It's also a great time to delete information. Maybe you wrote too much that you didn't need and it's superfluous. If you're doing this on something like Notability, it's easy, you just erase it. But if you're also handwriting it, don't worry about it. Just you know, kind of cross it off. Or what you can do is put a sticky note over something with the new information as well. Don't worry about your notes being gorgeous and pretty. Okay, That's one thing you don't want to get hung up on. It's okay for your notes to be a bit sloppy and messy. The key here is that we're interacting with them. I'm going to walk you through the editing and revising phase of taking notes. So as you can see here, I already have my notes taken in a dark color. And I do this again so that when I go in to revise my notes later, I can use contrasting colors to signal to my brain that there's different information to pay attention to. So in this example, I decided that I would use pink, orange, and yellow to signal to my brain different groups, dates, and people. In this pass of my notes, I've also switched the pen color to that hunter green color to annotate my thoughts or reactions. Also to annotate different edits if I made a mistake, for example, like in this case where I misspelled something on the first pass. It's also helpful to use a different color pen when you're going back through just to remind yourself that this wasn't something that you initially annotated. And also as you're discussing your notes or revising your notes with a peer or getting teacher feedback, you can add more thoughts that maybe you didn't have the first time around. For example, I've discussed this information and process it and have a new takeaway. So I'm annotating my thought in this example here so I don't forget my deep insightful thought. This step in the note taking process is so crucial to getting your brain interacting with the information that you've been reading and learning and helps you really engage with the material so that you can combat that rate of forgetting. The third phase of focused note taking is about engaging with this information on a deeper, more profound level. You'll see that I have a couple different examples of how I add questions to my notes after I've processed them. So for example here you'll see that I've added a sticky note with that red bold font. And I'll keep this style consistent throughout the rest of my notes. But what I'm doing here is that I'm asking a question that's requiring me to evaluate some of the information that I've taken notes on. So what you'll see here is that I've taken advantage of the white space that I left myself during phase one of the note taking process when I was actually creating my notes. I knew I'd need to come back and ask questions of my information later, so I wanted to make sure I had the space to do that. The other thing to note is that the answers that I'm going to be looking for are right there within the same vicinity of the question that I wrote. The other thing to really pay attention to is what kinds of questions, what kind of inquiry are you engaging in? You don't want to be asking basic level questions during the third phase of focused note taking. You can do that during the second phase when you're processing, asking kind of key vocabulary term type questions or basic comprehension questions. But these are the questions that are going to be more Costa's level three getting deeper and asking us to evaluate and apply our thinking. The fourth phase of the focused note taking process is when we summarize and reflect on our learning. So one of the ways that we do that is by reflecting on everything we've learned and everything we've annotated and creating a summary of all of this wonderful information so that we can put it into our own words and really solidify everything that we've learned through this activity. And once you've finished writing your summary at the end of your notes, you have completed the fourth phase of the focused note taking process. There's so many different ways that we can apply our learning in the fifth and final phase. Obviously, you're going to be using your notes to help you study and do well on tests and quizzes, but it'll help you get ready for writing a solid paper. Maybe you need to prepare for a Socratic seminar or an in-class discussion or a graded dialogue. But whatever your end result in applying your learning, you're going to be ready as long as you engage in this process and really focus on taking quality notes and interacting with them. So there you go. There's your general introduction to the focused note taking process. I promise if you engage in this, embrace it, learn it, live it, love it, not only will you find that you are going to be the strongest learner you can be, but you'll find that this is a great skill that you can carry with you into college and the beyond.